Hey, good morning, everyone. Great to see you all here today. Please rise. Let's begin worship together. all of you here this morning. If you could register your attendance using the attendance pads that are located down uh, one end or the other of your aisles and then pass them on down. If this is your first time with us or maybe even your second time with us, if you could fill out your full name, address, phone number, email, we sure would love to have that just in case we miss saying hello to you today that we can say hello to you a little later in the week. It's really good to have you if you are a guest this morning for the first or second or third time. And even if you're a member, it's really good to have you here this morning. A few announcements before we continue on with our worship service. Uh, Church Council meets tomorrow night at 6 o'clock in the chapel. If you are a leader of ministry at our church, please, please, please make every effort to attend. our church council meeting tomorrow night. If you are not a leader, you are also welcome. It's an open meeting. Anyone is available, uh, welcome to come to that. Big Tom and Friends, already again March 1st on Friday, so 1130 at Magnolia's. This is for any of you men out there. Um, They have a great lunch at Magnolia's, and they have fellowship, and lots of times they have a speaker that shares a testimony or whatever. Uh, It's just a great time of fellowship together. 
Pizza with the Pastors, um, March 3rd and March 10th. Anyone who is interested in becoming a member or finding out more about the church before you decide if you want to become a member. It's March 3rd and March 10th. And instead of having it in the parlor where we were going to have it, we're actually going to have it in 925, which is this... Uh, that way. That way. Yeah. yeah. It's the white building. As you go out the front doors here, uh, it's the white building, and it's um, room 925 over there. Uh, we had to move it because we've got so many people interested. Isn't that an awesome reason to move it? Yay! <laughs> We actually have 21 people that have been invited to come and uh, find out a little bit more about uh, our church to make it their church if they're interested in doing so. And if you would like to uh, be with us, just let us know so we make sure we got plenty of pizza. Next announcement, Women's Potluck Fellowship Meal is March 5th at from 5 to 7 o'clock. Here's a chance for you women to gather together uh, for fellowship and a dinner. And also, I hear you're going to have a few special guests, as in Ruth and Mary and Martha and another Mary. Hmm. So you're welcome to come to that if you'd like. Uh, kids, today is the sweetheart luncheon for senior singles. So if um, you haven't signed up, I'm sure... Scott Bellamy is cooking with his helpers in the kitchen as we speak. I'm sure that he has plenty of food if you didn't sign up ahead of time. This is an opportunity for a cross-generational event for the senior singles and the kids. The kids will serve you and then sit and eat with you and fellowship with you. So you're welcome to stay, and that's going to be right in here uh, after church. Also, wanted to let you know about the kids. Um, we are taking an extra effort in um, securing the safety of our kids here at First Church. Um, so we're asking you that if you leave here or come here through the hallway where we have the nurseries, to please do not use that hallway anymore. Um, you can use that side door that goes out to the Asbury building. You can use this front door. But we're trying to make sure that when the kids are here, they are safe in the hands of God. And we don't, we don't mistrust any of you, but when we have a hard time knowing who's going through that hallway, anyone could go through that hallway. And we sure do not want to put our kids at risk. So we're asking you to change probably what you've always done and go out that side door. So thank you for your help in that. Any other announcements for the good of the church? No? Our, yes? Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. We just wanted to remind all the parents that we did uh, move our children's church mm. um, at this hour after the children's message downstairs where it says kids zone. So children's ch children will meet me at that door rather than that door uh, to exit to go to children's church mm. today. Right. right? They'll be in room 106. Instead of going out this door and being on the second floor, they're now going to be on the first floor. And again, we're doing this to just keep our kids all together and as safe as possible. Okay? All right. If you guys could stand and pass the peace of Christ with those around you.
All right, if y'all will, please remain standing and let's continue worship.
please be seated. And at this time, we invite our children to come forward for our children's message with Pastor Donna. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody awake this morning? Good to see all these wonderful faces with us today. And I love that you're here with us to share in God's Word. And this morning we have a special message. I'm going to ask you a question here, though. First, who knows who Pastor Michelle is? Anybody know who she is? That's not me. Oh, there she is. That's Pastor Michelle. Well, guess what? She came today to share a very special thing with you, and I'm going to let her share it. All right. All right. Yeah. I brought something that is really old with me. You're going to see? Can you guess what it has to do with in this box? A box. A box. It has to do with Christmas. I want to show you two Christmas ornaments. Does that look old to you? Yeah? And how about this one? Does this one look old to you? Wow. Yeah? That's because they were on the Christmas tree when I was a kid. <laughs> wow. And maybe even before I was a kid. Maybe these are, are ornaments that my mom and my dad had before they even had children. And I came along. But we used them on my Christmas tree when I was little. And then we used them on my Christmas tree when my kids were little. And now I have passed them on to my kids. My daughter has these. And she's going to put them on her Christmas tree. And then sh one day she's going to give them to her daughter. So do you know what it's called when we pass on things like this? What it's called? Um, what are they called? Heirlooms, maybe? These are special things that we pass on from generation to generation to generation. Right, Pastor Donna? Uh, yes, and I bet you have things like that in your house, don't you? You have things from your great-grandpa? Who has a great-grandmother or great-grandfather? Do you have things in your house from them? Maybe. How about your grandmother? You have things in the house from your grandmother? Yeah. And those heirlooms are important, and it's part of our message today, which comes from the book of, um, if I can pull it up here, the book of Genesis, and it says this in, in verse 1. After this, the Lord spoke to Abraham in a dream, and God said, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I will keep you safe. I myself will give you many good gifts for you and your children and your children's children. And so this story is about God's promise. He didn't have something that God didn't give Abraham ornaments. God didn't give him anything that you can touch. God gave Abraham and his wife, Sarah, a promise. And the, promises, the promise was threefold. And one of them is that he promised God, I mean, he promised many of Abraham's descendants uh, children and great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren and on and on it goes. So there were many, many children that Abraham and Sarah had. The second promise was that he promised Abraham and Sarah land, a place to be, a place to settle, a place to worship him. And so that was the second promise. And the third promise that Abraham and Sarah got, which was the best one of all. This is a promise for you, and it's a promise for me and Pastor Michelle and everyone in this room. And the promise is that God would always, always love us and take care of us. Wow. That's, That's an heirloom big. to remember. Can you remember that God will always take care of us? So before we go to children's church... I'm going to have you pray with me. You ready? Ready? Dear God. Dear God. Who keeps promises. Who keeps promises. We are glad. 
We are glad to be a part of your family. To be a part of your family. Thank you for being dependable. Thank you for being dependable. We know you will always keep your promises. We know you will always keep your promises. To us and everyone. To us and everyone. And that helps us feel and that, safe. And that helps us feel safe. We know you will always love us. We know you will always love us. And we love you too. And we love you too. Amen. Amen. Right. Let's go downstairs. All children seven and below can go downstairs with me. Four to seven. Four to seven. Four to seven. We're going to go this way, guys. Good job. Four to seven. There they go. All right. At this time, we continue to worship our Lord through our tithes and offerings, so I invite the ushers now to come forward. Speaking of taking it to the Lord in prayer, we're going to spend this time, this next few minutes here, going to God in prayer, having a conversation with the Lord, letting him know what's on our hearts and minds, letting him hear our prayer requests and our praises. There'll be a time where we will, I will pause and you are welcome to share, to lift up a name of someone who is near and dear to you. And uh, God knows their every need, so let's keep it to the name so that we can keep people's information confidential. But God knows. He knows us all. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our strengths. He knows our needs. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Lord, we come to you today with thanks and with praise, worshiping your holy name, loving you with all we have in song and word and deed. We thank you for this opportunity that you have gathered us here away from the busyness of life and we were able to leave it outside these walls so that we can come in here and just concentrate on you on your grace on your love 
on your comfort and your support, on your healing, on your power, and on your promises. We ask you, Lord, just to fill this whole room with your Holy Spirit so that we feel your presence, that we can really feel you here with us as we worship you. And Lord, we, we thank you for all that you give us. So, so seldom do we take time to just say, thank you, Lord, for we would be nothing. We would have nothing if it were not for you. And sometimes, Lord, you want to transform us into really tight relationship with you. And sometimes that means change. And, and Lord, we, we as humans have a hard time with change. So grant us peace in knowing that sometimes we are called to a higher level of righteousness through you. That we are called into service. That maybe we're called into teaching or leading or sharing your word with others. All of that can be kind of scary sometimes, Lord, but you promise us that you're going to give us the words and we're just going to count on that. Lord Jesus, at this time, we take time to lift up our prayer concerns to you. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Once again, Lord, you hear the trust of your people. We would not be mentioning anything in prayer if we didn't know that you hear us. And that our prayers are granted according to your will. We trust in that, Lord. So we lay all these names before you. You know their every need. So we ask you, Father, to, to heal where there is healing needed, that, to comfort where there is comfort needed, to provide when someone feels like they don't know which way to turn. Gracious Lord, we thank you that you sent your son here into this world to teach us so many things, to teach us how to love and to forgive, to teach us how to treat others, to teach us the importance of spiritual treasures, not earthly treasures, and to teach us how to pray. So Father God, at this time, Hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Our scripture today comes to us from the book of James, chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. 
the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. These are the words of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today we're continuing on with Greg Crochelle's book called Christian Atheist. And one of his chapters this week we're, we're going to be covering is when you believe in God and not in prayer. Doesn't sound as bad as it, is it as bad as it sounds? Hmm? Don't raise your hands. But how many of you have a hard time praying? You're in good company. It must be enough people that Greg Cruchel put it as a, a, a chapter in his book, When You Believe in God and Not in Prayer. He says many Christians create a long list of reasons why they don't pray. From feeling not like we're not good enough at it, to being bored when we pray, from not wanting to bother God with our small requests, to not thinking our prayers can actually make a difference. Now these seem like kind of giant hurdles, especially if you, if you have a hard time with one of these areas. But I'm going to help. Actually, I'm going to help through the words of Greg Crochelle because I'm going to use a lot of what he said because it is so to the point to help us learn how to pray. So if you're not there yet, don't worry. We're going we're to have to start somewhere, and we're going to start this morning. Many of us fear that we aren't good enough, eloquent enough, Passionate enough. I sure don't sound like that pastor on Sunday morning. She prays with confidence, and I don't have that. I haven't always prayed with confidence, and I surely haven't always felt comfortable praying out loud. But God has got me to a place now that I pray with confidence. We forget that God loves the prayers of imperfect people. People who know they've done wrong. Who know they are helpless on their own. And who want so desperately to reach out to God and to know him. So what is prayer? Prayer, by definition, is communicating with God. But this communication doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't even have to be in talking. We communicate with God through lots of things, through music. I am very connected with God when we sing. Love the songs. Body language crafts, facial expressions, dancing. You see the little kids around here dancing? They're excited about the music that we're singing to the Lord. And even writing. Have you ever tried a prayer journal if you don't feel comfortable talking to God? Try one of those areas if you don't feel comfortable just talking to the Lord. He hears you in, in so many different ways. It doesn't have to be verbally or even the, the, the quiet talk within our head. No matter what mode of communication you use to God, pray to God, God most enjoys the prayer 
that is natural, direct, and simple. Groeschel says that um, as a parent, he would much rather his child climb up into his lap and say, Daddy, I'm afraid of the dark. Can you help me? Instead of thinking this way, many of us think we need to talk to God. Great um, um, omnipotent father of the household, I beseech your presence. Great provider of all, grant me thy presence through the long watches of the night. For lingering fears beseech me until dawn's first rays. At last light my heart with hope. Daddy, I'm afraid of the dark. Can you help me? Now, if you feel comfortable praying like that, pray like that. God gets it either way. But most of us don't pray like that. God wants to hear us. And if we have to think about the way that we're going to say it, oftentimes we just don't say it, do we? God doesn't need showy, uh, inauthentic prayers. He wants us to talk to him like we're talking to a friend, honestly, openly, and frequently. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, 18 says, Pray continually, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, continually doesn't really mean from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, you have to be in prayer the whole time. It means often. It means through every part of your life. It means letting God know what's going on with you. If we think about fancy, showy language, we're certainly not going to pray continually or often. So are you one of those people who get bored when you pray? You start out like gangbusters, and then about 30 seconds in you go, huh, what are we having for dinner tonight? Hmm, I got to stop by the grocery store because we're low on toilet paper. Hmm. And when you do that, does it make you feel guilty? Been there. Been there. Never been diagnosed with ADD, but I have a little bit of it when I pray. When prayer becomes an empty, meaningless ritual, it is boring. It can be boring. But when you pray, remember that God is truly excited to hear from you. Truly excited. Your prayer doesn't have to be long and drawn out. Remember, he wants to hear from you all the time. Think about how many times you text a friend or your daughter or your mom or your dad. Everything that we go through in life, we'd shoot somebody a text about, right? Well, can you imagine how much God would love it if we shot him a prayer? If you don't feel comfortable talking, shoot your own, you shoot your own number a text. And it's talking to God. Now, I don't mean praying for a close parking spot when you're running late. That's kind of a selfish little prayer. But a prayer for yourself cannot be selfish sometimes. How about if you pray when you're getting ready to go into a meeting and you're just dreading this meeting and you ask God to be with you? That's a little different. It's for yourself. But 
God understands and needs to hear from you that you need him. Psalm 34, 15 says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. Even those short, powerful ones that we shoot out to God, it's okay. It doesn't have to be long. Maybe the moment that you find out that a loved one has cancer, pray that God would heal him right then and there. Or your boss is driving you crazy. Talk to God about her or him. Maybe your marriage is in rough shape. Talk to God about it. God wants to hear about our lives in prayer. It's a communication with the Lord. Groeschel adds another reason people believe in God but not in prayer. They don't think our prayers can actually make a difference. He tells the story of a um, local church that has a bar right down the street. And the pastor asked his congregation, apparently this bar really creates a, a ruckus all the time. And the pastor asked his people to pray that God would close this bar and get rid of the evils that are within. Well, a few weeks later, lightning struck that bar and it burned to the ground. Having heard about the church's prayer crusade, the bar owner promptly sued the church. When the court date finally arrived, the bar, on, bar owner passionately argued that God struck his bar with lightning because the church members were praying for it. But the pastor backtracked a little, brushing off the accusations. He admitted that the church had prayed, but he also affirmed that no one in his congregation really expected anything to happen. The judge says, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Right in front of me is a bar owner, an unchurched bar owner who believes in the power of prayer and a pastor who doesn't. <laughs> Too many Christians believe that what we want is what we need and if God doesn't hop to it and meet our whims, we cry like babies and whine that our prayers are useless. Really? Prayers aren't some magical formula where we do X and Y and then God does Z. Prayer is instead a mysterious conversation with God. Even though we'll never understand why God answers some prayers and says no to others, Scripture shows us several things that matter when we pray. First, we need to give thought to our relationships with other people before we go to the Lord. James 5 says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. We just read that. Go to the, forgive others. Get right with others before you go to the Lord. Mark 11 says, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him or her so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. We are only made righteous through the grace of God 
And that includes the forgiveness of others. God calls us to that. Second, your motives matter. James 4 says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. Kind of like that parking spot. That was a selfish motive. During Jesus' day, the Pharisees often prayed long and loud prayers on the street corners so that they were seen by people and, and thought to be spiritual and righteous. That's all they wanted. They didn't do it with the right motive. They didn't do it for the Lord to hear them. They did it for others to hear them and to be impressed with them. But Matthew 6 says, And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. That's their motive. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Now that doesn't mean that we have to only pray alone in quiet spaces. Obviously we pray here, right? What it means is do it for the right reasons. If you're praying out loud for other people to go, wow, that guy prays really nicely, doesn't he? Or are you talking to God? Is it a conversation with the Lord? Another ingredient of effective prayer is our faith. James 1 says, but when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Kind of like that church and that pastor. Really not expecting anything to happen. And finally, part of our faith is praying according to God's will. If we ask something contrary to God's will... God, in his mercy, won't give us what we want. Now, that, that seems kind of harsh, doesn't it? We really want it. But God, in his mercy, won't give it to us. 1 John 5 says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked him of. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I know unanswered prayers can be truly frustrating Especially when you're almost certain that it's God's will what you're praying for. Maybe it's a promotion at work. Why wouldn't God want me to get a promotion at work, right? The trouble is, we don't know what God knows. We see it in human sight. God knows the end of the story. And sometimes our prayers are not answered. Or they're not answered according to the way that we have prayed for. But God, in his extreme love for us, his will is the only thing that matters. If he doesn't let you get that promotion, there's a reason. Maybe there's a better job that's going to come up. Maybe it's because you're going to be spending so much more time on that new uh, job 
that when your mom gets sick, you don't have time to spend with them, with, with her. God only knows that, those kinds of things. So if you're a Christian who rarely prays, it is my prayer for you that you would. Start small. Start small. Talk to God about whatever's on your heart. Whatever. You wake up in the morning and you're just feeling rough. Lord, I feel rough this morning. Please get me through this day. That's a prayer. That's a small start, and God loves it. Even if you don't see the results of your prayers around you, you may still sense God's loving presence as you begin to know him more and more through this communication that you have with him. But when you pray... And God specifically answers that prayer. You will never be the same again. Because you know that God hears you. And you know that you've got this connection with God. That you're even feeling God's will as you pray. You'll never be the same Prayer reminds you that you're, we are not in control, but we need to keep close to the one who is. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, so many times we just don't know what to say. But Lord, you promised us that the Holy Spirit will give us words. So we ask you, Lord, that if we haven't had prayer as part of our spiritual discipline, that you give us the right words, even if we start small. And then let us build more frequently. Then let us build even more in our relationship with you. Then let us build in our communication with you so that you hear everything about us and that we know you are in control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Michelle. So what prayer do we say and hear every Sunday? Lord's Prayer, that's right. Um, it's, uh, that's how Jesus taught us to pray. It was um, it's recorded twice in Scripture. Once he told his disciples, I believe that's in Luke, um, and then another was on the Sermon of the Mount. Is that correct? That's correct, right? I know you all just learned about that. Um, so anyway, someone decided to write a song about it, and uh, with Pastor Michelle preaching on how to pray this week, we figured it was a good week to learn it. So please rise. And uh, let's sing this together. We're learning it. Y'all can learn it. We'll sing it the next few weeks. So.
that's a good one. That's a good one, yeah. Now go forth knowing that God wants a relationship with you more than anything because that's how much he loves you. So go forth. Learn to pray and learn to accept God's love. Go for, forth in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we are having a luncheon in here right after, so if we could have some help just taking these chairs, putting them to the side, and we need four tables. So thank you so much.